In this short video, we're going to learn how to add vectors graphically and multiply vectors by a scalar. And we're going to introduce the concept of a linear combination and see graphically that we can write the position vector of any point as a linear combination of a given pair of non-parallel vectors. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. So let's start with just two vectors in the plane. There's a couple of ways that you can add these or find the sum of these two vectors graphically. And the method we're going to use is the parallelogram method. And that starts with having the two vectors tail to tail as we see here. Then we take a copy of the vector b and place it on the head of a. Then we'll take a copy of the vector a and place it on the tail of v. I'm sorry, of b. There we go. Now we've got a parallelogram. This is a special parallelogram that we will talk about many times in this course, and it's the parallelogram determined by the vectors a and b. To find the sum a plus b, then we just draw a vector from the common tail to the opposite corner of the parallelogram. And sure enough, this is a vector which goes in the direction of a, then in the direction of b. And so that would be a plus b. If I want to multiply a vector by a scalar, well, graphically, if you multiply by a negative scalar, then you're going to change the direction. So it's going to, the vector will lie on the same line that passes through the vector. Its tail will not move, but its head is going to move and point in the opposite direction. So we've got our vector b, the blue vector, and the opposite of b, or negative b, is the yellow vector. Here we just multiplied b by negative 1, but if we had multiplied it by a different number, it would also change its length in addition to pointing in the opposite direction. For example, if I multi multiply the vector a by 2, I get a vector in the same direction, so same tail, but now the length is doubled. So let's pause here because I'm going to use the phrase linear combination. In fact, when I introduced this video, I used the phrase linear combination. And what does that mean? Well, if you have a set of k vectors, v1, v2, all the way up to vk, and you multiply each one by a scalar, and then take the sum, you'll get a new vector, which is called a linear combination of the vectors v1 through vk. The scalars, or the, the numbers c1, c2, up to ck, are called the coefficients. So back to our picture. So now I'm going to add negative b and 2a using the parallelogram method. The resulting vector I'm going to write as 2a minus b. I could have also written it as negative b plus 2a. That's exactly the same thing. And that vector is a linear combination of a and b. Another method for adding vectors, uh, and this may be a simpler way of doing it if you have to do these uh, manipulations by hand, but I think the parallelogram method uh, gives us an interesting result, which we'll see in a little bit. But let's learn the triangle method. We write the vectors, in a, or draw the vectors, a little bit differently. Instead of putting them tail to tail, we're going to move or draw the uh, vector b with its tail 
at the head of vector A. And now we're going to form a triangle. We're going to draw a vector from the tail of A up to the head of B. And that should be A plus B. Again, how do I go from the head to the tail? Well, I could go directly, or I could go in the direction of A and in the same direction of B. And so getting from the head to tail of the green vector is the same as taking A and adding B. Now, here's an interesting result. If we have two non-parallel vectors in R2, and we pick any point, we can get to that point using A and B as a set of directions, or as our stepping stones. Let's see what I mean. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, I can go from O to P directly. But what I want to do is say, suppose I'm limited. I can only take steps in the direction of A or in the direction of B. Can I still get to the point P? Well, the answer is yes. And this is how we can do it geometrically. We start by drawing some lines parallel to vector A and parallel to vector B. So I have two lines. Those are the dotted lines there. I'm going to cut and paste a copy of one of the lines, and I'll paste it so it's passing through the point P. I'll do the same thing with the other line. Notice that now I have a parallelogram here. And so it's possible to go from O to P following this line parallel to A, and then following this line, which is parallel to B. Now it's parallel, which means that it's a scalar multiple of the vector B. And so graphically, uh, you can estimate, uh, sometimes you can get a very good estimate, of, well, how much longer is the side of the parallelogram than the vector B? And the blue side looks like it is, or the side that's parallel to the vector B, looks like it's about twice the length of vector B. And the red side looks like it's about twice the length of vector A. So to go from O to P, it looks like I could go twice the, in the direction of A, so two A vectors, and then two B vectors would get me to point P. So my position vector OP should be about 2A plus 2B. I wrote 2.0 because it's an estimate. But without doing any exotic algebra, we can actually figure out what the coefficients should be on A and B. Uh, so I can just count squares here. I can assume each square is one unit. So my vector A would have components 3, 2. My vector B would have components negative 1 and then 3. And the vector P has, I mean OP, the vector OP, the position vector, has uh, components 4, 10. And again, that just comes from counting the squares here to go from O to P. And so we know that from our diagram that the position vector OP is some number times the vector A plus another number times the vector B. And so if I just fill in the components for OP, vector A and vector B, and then set the components equal to each other, I get a system of equations. My first equation is 3C1 minus C2 equals 4. And then the second equation comes from the second components. So I'll have 2C1 plus 3C2 equaling 10. And I can solve this system by any method I would like. 
Uh, in fact, I'll just use elimination. I'll multiply the top equation, both sides, by positive 3. That gives me a new set of equations where the coefficient on C2 uh, is negative 3 in the first equation and positive 3 in the second equation. So when I add those two equations, I get an equation without C2. And I can solve that for C1. turns out to be 2. And C2 is also 2. So our graphical estimate uh, in this case was uh, very accurate. So we're going to come back to this in later videos, but I hope that this was informative for you.